yeah gender in japan a few a few big gender stories again every week it seems like there are gender stories as well japan is good at producing these but some interesting ones this week first of all the kedanen the uh, main business council of japan has set a uh, goal they call it a challenge which implies a challenge in japan is kind of uh yeah it's used in interesting ways that frankly uh, enhances the um it doesn't sound like a firm target or goal or you know it makes it sound much more aspirational but they 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 say that they're aiming for 30 percent women uh, executives by 2030 which is pretty uh, uh, um, ambitious uh, by japanese standards anyway uh, but they are challenging to get 30 percent executives and by the way this is not board or ceos this is executives and that's hard to do in a country which more or less starts most women out in career tracks in uh, dead end uh, you know in career tracks that uh, have limited um, you know ability for you know, limited advancement um, and that forces so many women uh, and where women are raised with the expectation of uh, quitting their job as soon as they get married and focusing on raising kids and schools and so on being so focused on the expectation that there is uh, one parent normally the mum who is at home full time for anything to work and yet through all that you know to, to actually suddenly have the you know executive level 30 percent women is going to be really really tough um, that's it there are more people aspiring to that there's more people um, you know in a position to do that but um, you know uh, certainly set, setting the goal is one thing but hopefully what it will do is for companies that are serious about looking to fill these and realizing that oh the candidates are not available they'll start to realize that oh to get the candidates to create the candidates they need to actually go all the way down and make sure from the beginning that they're treating women um, in companies based on their potential their career potential and their ability and not from the outset by the by their gender and limiting them in any way which is still the norm here so uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? This is the good thing. Even, even uh, we'll see how this target goes. Uh, Japan does have a way of, you know, it, it's it's like a big ship turning. It takes a long time, but when it does, it does. Um, the awareness is definitely increasing. A number of activist uh, hedge funds and so on have declared that they will not invest in companies that do not have diverse boards uh, and so on because... Um, there's data, Gartner data, uh, McKinsey data, you know, they're, they're coming out that now consistently shows that companies with diverse executives and diverse boards are consistently more profitable and more successful than companies that lack that diversity. And um, it could be a coincidence or a correlation, but uh, it implies that you're prone to stagnate and uh, not read your customers if you don't reflect uh, the thinking and the profiles of your customers. So. Uh, and this is all very well established elsewhere in the world that's coming to Japan late. But uh, yeah, it's good that they're trying um, and it'll be really interesting to see the results of that. Japan still, of course, scores terribly on just on gender equality uh, indices uh, around the world. But there you go. Uh, another thing related to that is if you are married in Japan, uh, I think I've just talked before about how difficult Japan is funny. There are so many. On the one hand, one thing I like about Japanese is that uh, there are not um, you don't need to know whether someone is a man or a woman in order to talk about them grammatically in a sentence. You know, in, in English, I've had this thing where, for example, I remember a Japanese company talking about a Sri Lankan contact that we had for a comment for a thing that we were doing, and I couldn't recognize the gender of the name of the person that we were talking about, which in Japanese isn't a problem, I can say. I'm going to send an email to them tomorrow. I'm going to hit a result. You know, this is all going to be fine. Now I'm going to ask them what time is convenient for them. I suppose you can say third person, and that's what people are doing sort of now. But in Japanese, you know, it never comes up that you need to know the gender. You can just say that that person, Nanjira san. Um, but then it came up when I wanted to type a, a, a male or I, I had to do something in English, and I suddenly realized that I, I was I was grammatically, I suddenly had to Google and try to figure out what their gender was in order to say a sentence about whether they could accept a shipment. <laughs> and it made me realize a problem with English language. That said, uh when Japanese use pronouns, they are super complicated. There's like a hundred different ways to say me and you and him and her, as well as our wife and husband are just like the hardest terms. Um, and it's kind of funny if you ask 10 people what they call their, you know, how they refer to their wife or their husband, they'll give you 10 different answers. Um, Unseen Japan, it's funny, I've gone into a little bit of a debate, more of kind of a debate. Um, Unseen Japan is a blog that basically translates a lot of um, 
uh, mostly news uh, but they, they, they definitely have a focus on social topics on gender topics on Japanese society about you know minorities and so on they've got a kind of a social awareness bent but you know it's essentially uh, they, they, they are commenting on and translating from Japanese news sources that focus on areas that are interesting to them and as a blog I think that's fine some people seem to be put out by their name that somehow they're revealing secret Japan when they're not which I don't think is what they actually proclaim to do they're just showing Japan is you know in ways that you don't see so much in English media and given that they're using Japanese sources for this pretty consistently I'm pretty comfortable that they're this is shareable but I think I saw some people this week I had several people say oh I don't like you know very pretentious that they're showing stuff that nobody knows I think some people sort of misread them but look I find I, the video that I recommended the other week on the history of Hokkaido that they did was excellent and articles like this are well written I'm, I'm comfortable with it they do point out that the um, the traditional if you look up the dictionary the first word for husband that you see in the um, dictionary is shujing which uh, you know is literally main person um, it is a literal translation of the two kanji but uh, it can mean master you know as in slave and master uh, and, and they're very honestly you don't hear many people say shujin anymore and also if you know anything about Japanese history or know anything about Japanese marriage <laughs> Uh, in spite of the image that uh, particularly Japanese men like to portray that you know they wear the boots and whatnot and you know in Japan you know women do as they told and men rule the roost oh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, yeah you should follow them home um, Japan uh, and, and pre Meiji you know Japan had women emperors and you know women women actually had a lot of power in Japanese you know like society um, it, it became like a Meiji thing. It was an, it was embarrassing to Meiji personally to find out he considered traditional traditional Japanese cu uh, culture to be effeminate, and he passed the rules that women were not allowed to be emperors anymore, and, and passed all of this stuff because he learned from the Prussians that they sort of you know because basically they imported willingly imported uh, European sexism because they felt like that Japanese uh, lack of sexism was a sign of um, you know being a developing country. <laughs> I thank you Europe it's amazing they didn't colonize us and yet somehow Japan still managed to bring across the, some of the worst culture but of course you know um, things like this the terminology um, the words that people use um, they have a list here uchi no hito that just means yeah the kind of the person at home but basically the yeah person at home is otto is kind of neutral you don't hear it very much dana is also kind of neutral um, yeah tsurei tsurei I mean, it sounds like you've been kidnapped to me. I, uh, that's a weird one. The Tsurei uh, honestly sounds like the ball and chain. It sounds like the person I dragged along. Shujin kind of sounds like master and is a bit awkward. But you know, partner. I, you know, I haven't really heard that being used. Papa. If a woman calls her husband Papa, I mean, also if they've got kids, some traditional families will refer to the father as father, even you know, to the wife. But yeah you don't hear that very often if they call them papa honestly it, that makes it sound like a sugar daddy or something like that that sounds weird um actually it reminds me when i went shopping yesterday uh for a desk for the lad um and uh the 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 uh, two interesting exchanges with the guy who was selling the desks the first was he looked at me and he was like, oh have i met your husband before and i'm like dude what are you talking about and yeah my wife looked at him and said he's just a white guy <laughs> i'm like well, thanks, honey. You know that that's you know um, I'm very moved. Uh, but that's 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 what I, they don't have just a white guy on this list. But apparently that's that's the one that my wife uses. So um, yeah.